this is Dr. Sridhar, back to you with another video session in control systems and in today's session I am going to talk about the importance of mathematical modeling and in what way the mathematical model derived of any practically existing system and how we are going to analyze the mathematical model and how we are going to use this information associated with the mathematical modeling in solving complex systems in control engineering related problems. Now first let us start with what is the mathematical modeling. Mathematical modeling of any control system is the first and foremost task that a control engineer has to accomplish for design and analysis of any control engineering problems. Now suppose let us take a me mechanical system. Now how we are going to solve the mechanical system? So first of all we have to identify the basic elements associated with the given mechanical system and for every component let us derive, let us represent the components in mechanical engineering, not only in mechanical engineering, for example I am taking the mechanical engineering and let us derive its mathematical equivalent which is nothing but the mathematical modeling. Suppose first let us talk about what is the importance of this mathematical modeling. Once the mathematical modeling or mathematical expression associated with that particular component is known to us, you need not bother about what the characteristics of that particular system and what are the basic laws associated with. Once that mathematical uh, expression is known to us, you need not bother about the actual system and what is the type of that system, whether it is mechanical, chemical, uh, combination of various uh, systems doesn't matter here. So that is the main intention of the mathematical modeling and that is the main use and application of converting any existing system with its analogous mathematical expressions or mathematical equivalent systems. So in today's session I am going to talk about the mathematical modeling and I am going to take different examples with suitable examples I am, to, I am going to discuss about this mathematical modeling elaborately. First, now how we are going to start this mathematical modeling. So first and foremost thing is normally what type of systems practically existing on the earth. Either the system may be static or dynamic. Means broadly now in previous videos also we have discussed about various systems associated with control systems. Now suppose let us take one type of system combination that is the static and dynamic system. What is the static system? Static system is just memoryless system and dynamic system is nothing but it is a memory full system. For the for example, now what are the example of the static system and dynamic system in electrical engineering fields? Now static system is nothing but the system if it is consisting of only resistors that is nothing but the static system. So we need not bother about what are the initial conditions of that resistor. The resistor won't have any initial conditions that is the best and simple example for static system. And coming back to the dynamic system, the example is either inductor or capacitor, the combination of inductor and capacitor is nothing but it belongs to dynamic elements and if the system consisting of this inductor and capacitor type of elements which is nothing but it is a dynamic system. So practically uh, if you could observe majority of the systems are more or less all the systems are uh, belongs to the dynamic uh, type of systems only. So first let us take the system and please try to analyze what is the basic nature of that particular system and in that uh, nature of that system what are the basic laws are available for us that basic laws are very very important and in this mathematical modeling we are going to utilize the basic laws associated with the type of that system the type of the system is nothing but whether it is electrical then if it is electrical what are the basic laws are uh, available so the example is Ohm's law you can take or just now little more uh, uh, if you are analyzing the electrical system sometimes we can take uh, Kirchhoff current law and Kirchhoff voltage law is also as a basic class and these are the basic class and these are the known basic class for us if the system is belongs to the electrical engineering fields. Similarly if you are taking the mechanical fields in the mechanical systems and uh, what are the basic laws available for us? The basic laws are nothing but the Newton's laws. And uh, some of the expressions, Coulomb expression is known to us. And with the help of these type of basic laws, try to elaborate or try to represent the actual mechanical system with its equivalent mathematical model, which is nothing but the mathematical modeling. 
what is the mathematical model uh, is known to us or if we succeed, uh, successfully derived its mathematical model now once the mathematical model is in our hands you need not bother about what type of system is and more or less sometimes what happens even the engineer who has de derived the equivalent mathematical model of the original system they themselves they don't know whether the system's equation is what type of equation we derived because more or less all the systems have been converted into the equivalent mathematical models so that is in that particular uh, uh, way we are going to derive the equivalent mathematical modeling and what are the uses of this mathematical modeling means anyhow we are going to discuss the uses applications of this mathematical modeling and what are the basic laws available in electrical systems and mechanical system how it will be used all these things we are going to discuss in today's session and just now also we have discussed about majority of the systems are dynamic in the nature and if the system is dynamic means time to time because initial conditions we are talking means that is uh, those are the behavior or that is the characteristics or performance of the dynamic elements at t is equal to 0 or just before t is equal to 0. If you are taking t is equal to 0 is the starting point at t is equal to 0 minus means just about to start what are the parameters or that is nothing but what are the values of current and voltage if that uh, parameter is electrical parameter or that component is electrical component what is the current just t is equal to 0 minus and what is the voltage at just t is equal to 0 minus all these values talks about the dynamic systems means indirectly this dynamic system is also if time progresses the behavior or the system performance may uh, may be altered now in view of this now if you are applying the mathematical techniques now uh, but with the help of basic class available in that particular domain now more or less we are going to get the differential equations only because the differential equation is nothing but what happens d square by dt square this type of form we are going to get so all the dynamic systems now if you are applying the mathematical modeling we are going to get the differential equations in the mathematical equivalent system and if these equations can be linearized now approximately piecewise linearization if you are taking laplace transform is highly used to simplify the system because now if the complexity if the order of the system goes on increasing means order means how can you dis, uh, determine the order of the system if the system having more number of energy storage uh, storage elements in it suppose for example if you are taking the electrical system now if there are 10 number of capacitors are there 5 number of inductors are there then what happens now the complexity of the system is goes on increasing and how many number what could be the order means the order is nothing but number of energy storing elements in that particular system so like this if the order increases now a differential equation is nothing but we are going to get higher order differential equation now in that cases with the help of if you want to solve the differential equation with the algebraic calculations or time domain expressions it is a laborious and cumbersome process so in such cases we are going to utilize laplace transform technique so that is nothing but the linearization of given time variant uh, system or differential equations are known to us then simply you apply the laplace transform and with the help of laplace transform uh, we are going to simplify the equations so mathematical model of a dynamic system is defined as a set of differential equations that represents the dynamics of the system accurately or at least fairly well suppose if you are taking suppose now uh, we might be confused now how we are going to get, uh, get the differential equations let me take suppose suppose if you are taking an inductor now if that inductor and this is nothing but what is this this is the best example for the dynamic system yes now now i am saying that the dynamic systems mathematical model is nothing but the differential equation now see what are the parameters associated with this this is the current input and output is nothing but this might be the voltage is the output suppose if you want to calculate the output output is nothing but voltage drop across the inductor is nothing but whatever the mathematical equation l into d a b d t how we obtain this expression with the help of ohm's law or basic laws basic laws right so this mathematical expression once able to derive of this inductor that is nothing but the VL is equal to L into DA by DT. So what is this I here? That is the input. 
and what about the output of this inductor output is the drop across it that is nothing but the vl is the output so if you could clearly observe this equation no doubt it is a mathematical equation mathematical equation of what this is the mathematical equation of the inductor it means the inductor can be equivalently represented in the mathematical form as vl is equal to l into d by dt and here this mathematical equation is nothing but indirectly this is the relation between output and input so what type of relation this output and input are related those are nothing but in, in terms of the differential equations so what do you mean by that so any element now for example in this analysis i have taken the inductor now inductor is nothing but this is example for electrical element so any electrical component equivalently we can represent in the mathematical equation so that mathematical equation is nothing but which talks about or which establishes the relation between output parameter and input parameter now let me take the inductor as the example now once the current is allowed to pass through it now if you are taking if we assumed that current is the input i the drop across that inductor is vl what is that vl vl is nothing but the voltage drop we can observe across the inductor so if i is the input v is nothing but or vl is nothing but the output and these are the parameters input parameter and output parameter of inductor which is nothing but it is a electrical component or electrical system component so the inductor can be replaced with the mathematical equation as vl is equals l into di by dt what is vl output is equals l times of di by dt of input means the output of that inductor or output of that electrical systems varies linearly with a ra uh, rate of change of di by dt times of input so vl is nothing but l into di by dt once that equation is known to us so that equation we have established how we develop the expression between output and input by making use of the fundamental laws associated with the parent domain that is nothing but the, that component is belongs to the electrical domain so that expression is also that expressions means that basic laws of that particular domain only you had to choose with the help of basic laws why more um, more times i am specifying uh, that basic laws means now basic laws are very simple to remember and these are the familiar expressions available in that particular domain so every engineer or every student might have some knowledge about the basic laws so you need not i mean to say that you need not um, uh, rigorously remember so many formulas or middle level or upper level formulas only basic laws are more or less enough to solve or to derive the mathematical equivalent of any existing system parameters or any existing systems so mathematical equation you can easily derive with the help of basic laws that is in this concept uh, context only and so many times i am specifying that basic laws basic laws it is very easy and from the 10th standard or below 10th standard also we were familiarized with that basic laws so that laws are enough and you need not remember any expressions or any tough formulas to determine the mathematical equivalent of any existing systems so that only made me to choose the basic laws basic laws basic laws those are enough so with the help of basic laws first you have to identify the system and carefully you have to ear ear mark what is the input and what is the output and that parameter is belongs to which configuration which system it is either mechanical or electrical or other form of uh, system that is nothing but the nature of the system you have to identify and once that nature of the system is known to us then you go for the basic class available in that particular domain and with the help of basic class try to establish the relation between input parameter and output parameter once that input and output parameters equation is known to us which is nothing but which is nothing but the mathematical equation that we have developed between output and input with the help of basic laws so for the inductor for the inductor inductor is a dynamic system and it belongs to the electrical so basic laws are ohms law and any other basic laws with which we were convenient you can make use of that laws and 
output and inputs have been identified. So, try to develop the relation among output and inputs and the relation is nothing but the differential. So, finally, the dynamic system is nothing but equivalently represented with the differential equation. Of course, here in this example, only one energy storage element is there. So, that is why the order of this equation is nothing but the only first order only we obtained. Suppose, if you are taking the LC combination, what happens? The, the expression may be second order expression. So there, you might have get d square by dt square some type of expression. So, ultimately, from this simple slide, we can say that mathematical equation can be determined or derived from the parent uh, system components or with the help of basic class available in that particular configuration. So, finally, the dynamic systems uh, equations we can develop in terms of the differential equations. So, what are the different mathematical models are available? Commonly used mathematical models are differential equations. Just now also in the previous slide, we have elaborated the differential equation models. And next one is the one more important uh, ma mathematical model is transfer function model. And last one is nothing but the state space model. So, what is this? All these things means the mathematical models only the mathematical equations you have to rearrange and readjust and we can uh, convert or we can represent the mathematical model either in the form of uh, differential equations or in the form of transfer function or in the form of state space analysis. So, these are the standard and majorly used mathematical models in the control systems or control engineering applications. So, differential equations, these differential equations are applied what type of control systems? So, generally differential equations are this model is applied for time domain. Suppose if the system varies with respect to the time domain, just now also we have discussed about this. If any system is varying with respect to the time or time uh, timely it is sensitive, then differential equation approach is better solution. And next one is state space model is also it works with the time domain. And uh, second one is the transfer function model. So, generally transfer function model is applied for S domain applications. So, that is nothing but more or less uh, it will have some real number and the complex frequency. Such type of system, if any system is represented with uh, complex frequency concepts, that is nothing but the S domain, then transfer function approach is more, more simply we can determine the mathematical models. So, that mathematical models are three ways just now as we discussed. And what is the use of these models? And this generally, these mathematical models uh, depends on what type of application, in which area we are applying. So, this application only decides what type of mathematical model is useful and what is the model we have to choose to simplify or to derive or to determine the mathematical equivalent of original system. Now, generally, in the optimal control systems, in the optimal control system, state space analysis is widely used. And anyhow, we are going to discuss this uh, optimal control systems and state space model in the later uh, video sessions. Till now, please excuse me. Now, just for the say, time sake, try to remember what is the optimal control system and what type of uh, uh, mathematical model technique we are going to use. Means, state space model is highly useful if the system is optimal control system. And for the remaining thing, linear time invariant or linear time variant, okay and a single input to single output systems. Now, differential equations or transfer function model is very, very helpful for us. So, here, what type of model? Now, how we are going to choose means that only majorly in which area, which application you are working, that only decides what type of mathematical model is helpful for us. And the approach to dynamic system problems and means how we are going to proceed to in the process of deriving the mathematical modeling of dynamic systems. So, we have elaborated that majority of the systems are dynamic in the nature. If the system is dynamic in the nature, how we are going to, how we are going to proceed uh, in determining the mathematical equivalent of the original dynamic system. Here, it was very clearly mentioned the dynamic system might be electrical or mechanical or whatever it may be. Here, we are not bothering about what type of system is. But we are going to develop some procedural steps in order to determine the mathematical equivalent of the system. So, first thing is nothing but first you have to identify the system just now also we have discussed and you have to identify the system and you have to clearly identify 
various components. What are the associated components the system is having? This is the very, very foremost thing because it will be helpful for us. Uh, what are the basic laws or what are the mathematical equivalents and what are the fundamental principles available in that particular domain? Now, in order to do that, first of all, you have to carefully identify and study. At least you should know what about the input and output relations of the components and the system itself. So, next one is the formulate the mathematical model and list its necessary assumptions. So, formulate is nothing but you have to develop the mathematical model. It is nothing but the you have to try to establish the relation between input parameter and output parameter. Sometimes what happens now in, in some of the cases, sometimes we need to assume some of the assumptions. Now, some of the cases because if the complexity, if it is goes on increasing, in such cases, what happens? You have to make some simplified assumptions. And at the same instant, while we are developing the relation between input parameter and output parameter, it, you, we have to clearly mention what are the assumptions we have made. Now, that is nothing but the step number two. And in step number three, we are going to develop or we are going to write the differential equations describing the model. Suppose if it is electrical, in, in today's session only, we have taken inductor is the best example. Similarly, we can write the differential equations or the equivalent differential equation which describes well of the capacitor or L and C. Now, the differential, the mathematical model is also in, in the form of differential equations. So, next, after getting the various differential equations of various components, now, what happens? Suppose if the system is having L and C, let us assume inductor and the capacitor. Separately, you have to write the expression for inductor and then separately, you have to write the expression for capacitor. Expression is nothing but the mathematical equation, which is nothing but the differential equation. And after getting the differential equations of individual components, then you have to rearrange that equation because now if inductor is connected like this and if the capacitor is connected like this, Suppose if that current is nothing but I and the output is nothing but I want to see the output voltage here. Now what happens? Now for the sake, first let me take the inductor separately and with respect to this inductor what happens? I1 might be, so, sorry, some voltage is nothing but let me assume some voltage V1 and this V1 is the output of this inductor and V1 will be the input for the capacitor. Now as a whole system, if you want to uh, find out the mathematical equation, this V1 is nothing but it will not carry any information. So, which is nothing but the, it is an intermediate variable. So, you have to rearrange the mathematical equation associated with the inductor and associated with the capacitor and you have to rearrange the two equations such that this intermediate variables can be eliminated. Only finally, the, com uh, the combined or the whole expression of L and C, we have to rearrange such that it will have only the variables either in terms of the current or in terms of the v only this intermediate variable v1 is now we need not consider that particular v1 so that is what solve the equations for the desired output variables and output variables means not only output at the same instant because mathematical equation is nothing but it tells the relation between the input and output so what are the desired parameters among that parameters only try to establish the relation and that is nothing but in order to do that you have to solve various differential equations and examine the solution. Suppose whether you reach, you, uh, reach to a concrete and desired expression or not, if it is not, then you have to reanalyze and redesign the assumptions and you have to examine the assumptions also, whether we have taken the assumptions properly or not, because that assumptions should not deviate maximum from the desired output. And last and final thing point is, if necessary, reanalyze or redesign the system. So, like this, these are the basic steps we had to follow while establishing or while designing the differential equations that is nothing but the mathematical model of the given system. So, let us uh, try to develop the mathematical modeling of various electrical and the mechanical parameters. In today's video session, I am going to cover the mathematical equations or mathematical expressions of various electrical and the mechanical parameters. Suppose if the electrical system is having the resistor, the resistor symbol is I have shown here and everybody knows that and 
next one is the resistor symbolically you can represent like this so what is the input and output suppose now vice versa you can take need not be the current because if you are applying some voltage here what happens some amount of current it will be passed through this resistor that is i so this voltage are the if you are applying some voltage here that is nothing but the voltage drop across this inductor so vice versa you can take so we are the time domain expression relating to voltage and current for the resistor is given by ohms law so what is this like here it is a basic law so what is the element this element is belongs to which uh, uh, field so this element is belongs to the electrical field so you have to identify the component and you have to analyze that component and you have to uh, clearly mention whether the component is belongs to which area because once if we reach to that particular conclusion then we can dig that system and you have to at least refer the fundamental laws associated with the particular field now if it, if it is electrical now let me take the ohms law and let me take ohms law for the establishing or uh, for the establishment of input and output parameters suppose if the basic component resistor if you could take that relation is nothing but it well describes who will describe ohms law uh, clearly establish the input and output relations of the resistor so that is v if it is taken as output now v is the output then if it is the current is the input and uh, input and output can be established like v is nothing but i into r suppose if it is time domain expression if you could generally broadly if you are speaking vr of t that is a drop across the resistor is equals ir of t into the resistor r so ir of t is nothing but the current flowing through that resistor and r is nothing but that is a proportionality constant or that is the equivalent of that particular system if you could take this as a system whatever the mathematical equivalent of this particular system the mathematical equivalent of the system is r so that is the meaning of this so if you could apply the laplace transform suppose if it is necessary because uh, that laplace transform is widely used now if you want to represent the system in terms of the s domain expression that is a transfer function model in some of the cases now we need to represent the mathematical equations in terms of the transfer function so in some cases if it is required then you can take the laplace transform if it is needed if it is not needed you need not take the laplace transform anyhow but for the better understanding now we i have give uh, i am presenting the laplace equivalent of the mathematical expression so we are as of v r of s is nothing but r into i r of s so in the in bracket instead of time s will come so once that s came means that is the s domain expression if it is in t in bracket if any parameter is designated with t that is the time domain expression time domain quantity similarly if i take the inductor just now also we have discussed about the inductor so the schematic representation and the equivalent representation clearly i am presenting for better understanding now the inductor is what about the time domain expressions relating to voltage and current of the inductor and here also basic laws will helpful for us to establish the relation between the input and output parameters across the inductor so again v is nothing but the l into da by dt that l is not v is nothing but that is a drop across this inductor which is nothing but the vl and the current is nothing but the i is the current so this is nothing but you can write il if both are the time variable parameters vl of t is nothing but l into dil of t by dt now this is a no doubt it is a differential equation in the previous one also but the order is zero but it is also a differential equation this is the first order differential equation i told you very clearly the order of the system is nothing but the number of energy storing elements now suppose for this expression if you are applying the laplace transform so vl as vl of s is nothing but the s into l into il of s now here what is the assumption we have made now that assumption is very important now the assumption is nothing but we have ignored the initial condition means we have simply ignored whatever the initial current the inductor is having so it means there is no energy that inductor is having just before the starting of that inductor or just before the bringing of that inductor into the application so this that's why these assumptions are very very important if the component is dynamic component especially because the resistor can be taken as a static element but whereas inductor and capacitor is mandatory these are the example for best example for the dynamic elements so whenever you are working with the dynamic components 
now that assumptions are very very important you have to clearly specify what are the assumptions we are going to make in order to determine the equivalent mathematical expression so similarly let us proceed for the capacitor also now this is the time domain expression relating to the voltage and current for the capacitor is nothing but vc of t is nothing but 1 by c integration over ic of t into dt now this is also now actually what happens this way is nothing but you can also represent ic is nothing but c into dv by dt now this is also a differential equation now you can also apply the uh, laplace transform for this expression or this expression with which you are convenient but ultimately i want to represent the laplace transform and it is very clear that all the dynamic systems are gives the differential differential equations in the mathematical equation so vc of t is equal to 1 by c integration over ic of t into dt now for this if you are applying the laplace transform vc of s is equal to 1 by cs into ic of s now this is ic is the current flowing through the capacitor vc is nothing but the drop across the capacitor now these are the basic passive elements you can come across in the electrical systems and we have studied the mathematical expressions of all the components so finally what is our uh, object here so object is nothing but the mathematical model of various electrical components so the mathematical modeling of the capacitor is this is the mathematical modeling of the capacitor so vc of t is equal to 1 by c integration over ic of td into dt now here one of the important thing we have to remember now some people will say that sir why not this ic is equal to c dv by dt is not is not a mathematical model of the capacitor no it is not like that the mathematical model can be different now in the perspective of the uh, engineer is going to solve suppose that means what i want to say you is that mathematical equivalent is nothing but it is not unique in the name it will vary from person to person so means what type of basic class is going to use in order to determine the mathematical model that will definitely vary the mathematical equivalent representation so that is now mathematical equivalent of any component any electrical or mechanical component is not unique now it will vary in perspective of that person to person that is very very important now for uh, uh, in the abstract form i am representing the resistor and what about the iv relations and vr relation capacitor and inductor these are the few mathematical expressions so finally once the expression is known to us you need not bother about uh, whether what type of element it is if this is immaterial here of course we have concentrated so much in the beginning once this mathematical is known to us you need not bother about again or what whether it is capacitor or inductor or resistor it is no matter here and suppose for rlc series circuit now as a whole if you could uh, find out the mathematical equivalent of that then impulse voltage source anyhow uh, everybody knows that what is that impulse means impulse is nothing but within a shortest period in the negligible period if the magnitude is infinity then that type of sources are nothing but the impulse sources but of course let me keep that concept aside because i am talking about uh, i am more worrying about the mathematical equivalent of various electrical parameters now if all these electrical parameters like uh, components i mean to say components r l c are connected in series with respect to one voltage source of course the voltage may be impulse or may not be impulse that is a secondary param a secondary discussion here and separately we have calculated the mathematical equivalent of the resistor that value is nothing but r into i of t provided that i we have assumed as the input current and l into di by dt is nothing but across the inductor this one and across the capacitor separately we have written 1 by c integration over i of t into dt and it means this del of t that is a supply voltage is nothing but drop across the resistor plus drop across the inductor plus drop across the capacitor now this is the formula is nothing but the kvl formula and how we are going to find out the drop across this resistor is nothing but the we can write i into r and this is the drop across the inductor is nothing but i in l into di by dt drop across the capacitor is nothing but 1 by c integration over i into dt these formulas we have developed again with the one more fundamental laws ohms law and associated laws of various inductors and the capacitors so here we have made use of two different laws 
in order to establish a relation. And again, why we have taken the plus among them? So that is nothing but that is talks about seriously connected. So drop across, drop inside the circuit, inside the loop is nothing but into the applied voltage. So del of t is nothing but Vr plus Vl plus Vc. That is nothing but the mathematical equivalent of this total electrical circuit is nothing but this total electrical circuit equivalently you can represent I as R I of t plus L into D I of t by dt plus 1 by c integration over I of t into dt. So instead of del of t if you could take V of t so this value is nothing but the V of t only straight away. So this is once this expression is known to us of course knowingly or unknowingly we might have used this expression so many times means what are the advantages of representing any system with a mathematical equation means you need not draw the resistor, inductor and the capacitor and you need not establish the connection among the parameters with respect to the voltage source and now once this expression is known, known to us now in the total process in the remaining uh, associated calculation it is very easy as we have we are not ignoring the generosity of individual elements we are exactly we have uh, examined the properties and everything associated with individual components finally we arrived to a complex uh, uh, complex solution which describes well about the total electrical system so this is the mathematical equivalent of series rlc circuit similarly if you are taking rlc parallel circuits so this is r l and c now for this how can we establish the mathematical modeling so this is the input current i i of t and the current is is nothing but i r and the current here is let me assume i l and this current is nothing but the i c so here this is the common point here because this is the uh, parallel configuration and current sources are there let us uh, apply kcl and as per this kcl what happens now as per this kcl i of t is nothing but i through the resistor plus i through the inductor plus i through the capacitor now why we have taken plus 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 because with the help of kcl incoming current is nothing but the outgoing current at any common node now this current is approaching and this current is leaving this current is also leaving this current is also leaving so like this k with the by applying the kcl it is clear that i of t is equal to ir plus ir plus il plus ic this is the case then after this how we are going to find out the ir now again make use of ohm's law basic class here this is nothing but voltage because all these three are parallel so let me assume the voltage across the capacitor is v of t then if it is v of t the drop across inductor is also v v of t and drop across resistor is also v of t so this the current is nothing but v of t by r and inductor current is nothing but 1 by l integration over v of t into dt plus across the capacitor that is nothing but the c into dv by dt so this is the mathematical equation and finally we can say that i of t is nothing but v of t by r plus c into dv by dt plus 1 by l integration over v of t into dt so this is the equivalent of this rlc parallel circuit so this way of representing any electrical circuit is nothing but mathematical modeling and this mathematical modeling will helpful for us in simplifying and in in the simple way of representing any electrical or mechanical systems now in the next case let me take mechanical systems here so there are two types of mechanical systems uh, we may come across in day to day lives that is the translational systems and rotational systems what is a translational system if you are applying some force on that particular body if that body moves in only one direction so that is nothing but the translational systems means suppose let me assume here so this is the mechanical body and if you are applying some force on it now if it will it will make some displacement the displacement is x and this is the one type of mechanical system and if you are taking some wheel and suppose if you are applying a force that actually it is not force here this is the torque now if you are turning this any wheel in one particular direction it starts traveling like this so how many revolutions it will make so theta revolutions the displacement an angular displacement more exactly if you are speaking so this is also a mechanical system these systems are called as a rotational systems so there are two types of mechanical systems one is, one system is nothing but the mechanical translational systems next one is mechanical rotational systems so first let me take 
in the mechanical translational systems, how we are going to develop uh, the various mathematical expressions of various individual elements that a mechanical system is having. So basically, if you could observe, either it uh, mechanical systems, mechanically translational systems, now there are three basic components you can come across. One is like R, there is a mass, mass of the element. So now if you could take here, this is the mass and it will have some weight. So one parameter is nothing but the weight. So this is equivalently represented as the mass. Next one, if you are placing this mass element or mechanical element on any surface, what happens? Now this may have some friction. So second one is nothing but friction coefficient uh, that is also rep uh, uh, represented as a Dampy coefficient. And third one is this uh, mass may have some elasticity nature. This may have some elasticity nature. So that is nothing but the spring constant. So basically these are the three parameters you may come across with if you are observing any mechanical body or mechanical element in the translational systems. Suppose now, now once if we identified that this body is belongs to the mechanical system, then immediately then take us whatever the basic class that mechanical systems are having. Now, now who, who will come into picture that is the Newton's second law, Newton's laws. Now with the help of Newton's laws, now we can simplify that electric, uh, mechanical systems by writing the equivalent mechanical equations. So what are they? First, for the, uh, with respect to the mass, if you could observe, force is nothing but directly proportional to the acceleration. Force is directly proportional to acceleration. So that is F is equal to M into A. So or otherwise, F is equal to M into dV by dt or furtherly if you can represent as M into d square x by dt square. What is this x? x is nothing but the, it is the displacement, linear displacement. So this is about this. So finally, this mechanical body equivalently you can write as f of t is equal to m into d square x by dt square. So it is a second order differential equation. So next one is device with friction. Suppose if you are placing that mechanical body in any, any surface, what happens? Now, if generally not happens, surfaces are not smooth. Now surfaces may have some rough surface. Now any body, if you are keeping on the rough surface, definitely there will be a friction between the two surfaces, body and the another surface on which we have rested that mass. So that also influences the displacement. The displacement which is nothing but the output of the system. So if the if there exists a maximum amount of friction, then automatically uh, proportionally what happens? The output will be proportionally changed. So that's why friction is also one of the major component which also influences the output parameter even though input we have not changed. So that parameter also let me consider into the mathematical equivalent with the help of some damping coefficient. The damping coefficient is nothing but it is represented as B. In some of the cases you can also write D but preferably B is the most optimal. So force is nothing but B into dx1 of t by dt minus dx2 by dt which is nothing but just simply remember that force is directly proportional to dx to the dt. What is this x here? x is nothing but the displacement and proportional to the displacement force will be proportional. So if you are removing the proportionality constant, b will come into picture. So first one is a linear relation, second one is a first order relation, f is directly proportional to rate of change of displacement. Now that will happens in the friction coefficients. Now last one is spring coefficient. So we everybody knows that f of t is nothing but k into displacement. So this may be x of t. Now this is the displacement and k is nothing but the proportionality constant. Now all together if any system if it is having let me apply the force here and let the output is nothing but the x. So for this particular one now this body itself it is having uh, input is the force and output is nothing but the displacement. The mathematical equivalent of this mass is nothing but f is equal to m into d square x by dt square plus this mass was rested on a fixed surface so it will have some friction with respect to that so that is nothing but f is directly proportional to dx by dt and third one is this mass may have some elasticity nature so f is directly proportional to k into x of t so if all this together because anyhow all these uh, three properties are the properties of this single element so applied force proportionally there will be a displacement so input force is nothing but the drop because of the weight. So there will be opposition by the mass itself 
and again there will be opposition by the friction and there will be opposition because of the spring. So, inputs or applied force is equal to the sum of the drafts. So, applied force F of T is equal to draft because of mass and draft because of the friction and draft because of the elasticity nature. So, this is nothing but the force balance equation. Force balance equation is nothing but the applied force is equal to force consumed by various components in the system. So, F of T is equal to M into D square X of T by DT square plus B into DX of T by DT plus K into X of T. So, this is nothing but the force balance equation and this holds good if the system is the mechanical translational systems. And last one is what about the rotation system? If you could see here, it is a mechanical rotational system. Now, in the mechanical rotational system also, just now also we have discussed. Now, here there will be angular movements. So, angular displacement and here it is not a linear force we are going to apply here. Here in this mechanical rotational systems, now we are going to apply the force in the twisting manner. So, twisting force is nothing but it is a torque. So, you have to make displacement in angular direction. So, uh, we have to apply the twisting force which is nothing but the torque. So, here again the moment of inertia will come into picture. The moment of inertia of the body just like mass in the translational system that is J and the remaining parameters are same. So, only instead of mass we are going to take moment of inertia because if the body if you want to revolve in a particular direction. So, the body itself it will have some weight. So, the weight is called as a moment of inertia of that rotation rotating body. So, that is generally represented with capital J and that body may have some elasticity nature that is again it is equivalently represented with the spring constraint that is K and that body may have some opposition because of air friction or any other things. So, uh, all over at, or at a whole set we can say that that is the friction because of other parameters equivalently represented with damping coefficient that is B and the uh, formulas are same torque is directly proportional to angular velocity, uh, angular acceleration. Angular acceleration is torque of T is nothing but J into D of omega T by DT or this is nothing but J into alpha. Alpha is nothing but the angular acceleration. So, alpha is nothing but angular acceleration. And what about this omega? This is omega is nothing but the angular velocity. This is the angular velocity. And this is nothing but the theta is nothing but the angular displacement. So, only the thing here we have to remember that theta is nothing but the equivalently x, small x in the translational system. This is also omega, this is a. Now, that is the way of representing the systems. What is the parameters associated with the rotational and translational systems? And viscous friction, that is nothing but just like a friction only. So, tau, uh, tau of t, that is the torque is directly proportional to d by dt of angular velocity. So, torque is directly proportional to d by dt of, sorry, omega and this is nothing but r directly proportional to d theta by dt. So, if you are removing this proportionality constant, we will get the b. So, that is what here and next one is the uh, torsion that is the elasticity nature. So, torque is directly proportional to, torque is directly directly proportional to theta, torque is equal to k into theta. So, same. So, that is the equivalent representation of B and moment of inertia and k is this one. And just to comparing, if you are comparing the various uh, mechanical systems with electrical system, the mathematical models also we have determined. Now, this is nothing but for the mechanical system if you are taking that m into d square x, by, uh, x of t by dt square plus b into dx by, uh, of t by dt plus k into x of t is equal to applied force. This is the for the mechanical and this is the electrical series connected and this is the electrical parallelly connected. So, uh, like this we are going to determine the mathematical modeling of any electrical or mechanical system. For better understanding I have taken two types of systems here mechanical and electrical and mechanical also in the translational and rotational form and uh, electrical also in the series and parallel configuration. With this uh, fundamental idea we can proceed and we can derive the mathematical equivalent of further complex systems either in mechanical or electrical. I think you have understood the utilization of basic laws in order to determine the mathematical equivalent of 
electrical and mechanical system i hope it is very clear to you all thank you for watching this video thank you very much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates